all across the country. Democrats are working to make sure that the wealthiest Americans and largest corporations pay their fair share in taxes so we can do things like make child care more affordable, so we can make real progress in the fight against climate change. All across the country, Democrats are trying to make it easier to vote, not make it harder to vote, and push back on Republicans who are trying to systematically prevent ordinary citizens from making their voices heard. Just this past week, some of you probably saw, every Democrat in the Senate supported a bill that would protect the right to vote and ban partisan gerrymandering and, and reduce the influence of dark money in our politics. Every Democrat voted for it. Every Republican voted against it. Which, by the way, there's a little bit of an aside, but you have to ask yourself, why, why is it Republicans don't want you to vote? What, what is it that they're so afraid of? Yeah, you know, it, 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 I would assume, Terry, if, if they think they've got better ideas, why don't they just go make the case? Tell us your ideas. Tell us why you think they're going to be better. Tell us how it's going to help that man get a job or, or help that young person go to college or, or help that person get a trade. Hey, just explain it. And if, if you've got good ideas, People will flock to your ideas, but, but that's not what they try to do. Instead, you're trying to rig elections. Because the truth is, people disagree with your ideas. And when that doesn't work, you start fabricating lies and conspiracy theories about the last election, the one you didn't win. That's not how democracy is supposed to work. Our democracy is what makes America great. It, 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 it's what makes us the shining city on the hill. This extraordinary experiment in self-government and protecting that and preserving that, that shouldn't be a partisan issue. It didn't used to be. So that's what Terry and Democrats everywhere are focused on. So let, let's, let's shift for a moment to what Terry's opponent is running on. Don't boo, vote. No, booing doesn't do nothing. Booing might make you feel better, but it's not going to get Terry elected. Vote. Now, so don't boo. I, I, want, you to, I want you to get fired up inside, and then go vote. <laughs> Terry's opponent, he's thinking Virginia's either aren't paying attention or he thinks that they're gullible. Now, th this is someone who has been very successful, made hundreds of millions of dollars. And you know what? That's great. We don't begrudge success. We want everyone in America to have a chance to pursue their dreams. That's what Terry did as a successful business person himself. But you notice that having achieved success, Terry then decided, I need to give back. I need to lift people up. I need to create more ladders of opportunity for everybody else. Because somebody did that for me, I'm going to do it for the next group of people coming along. That's why he got into public service. His opponent, uh, not so much. His opponent doesn't want people like him to pay a dime more in taxes to support education or job training or child care or all the other things that might help the next generation get ahead. Although now suddenly he wants you to believe that he's discovered the middle class. Terry's opponent would, he supported a policy that would cut education and public safety and put more than 40,000 teaching jobs at risk right here in Virginia. And now he's telling you he's very concerned about our kids and our streets. He told some voters in private that he can't talk about a woman's right to choose while he's running, but he said that if he wins, he'll restrict the right across Virginia. 
So I, don't boo. So how can he claim to be the candidate for women? I don't either. As far as I can tell, the big message of Terry's opponent is that he's a regular guy because he wears fleece. And he's accusing schools of brainwashing our kids. He's also said he wanted to audit the voting machines used in the last presidential election again. Really? Encouraging the lies and conspiracy theories that we've had to live through all this time? And yet, we're supposed to believe he's going to stand up for our democracy? Listen, I, 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 I want to emphasize this. I'm glad that the guy can play basketball. You know, I'm, many of you know, I, I'm a big hooper. I'm a, you know, so, so that's a good thing. You know, no, no yeah, the guy, but the guy can hoop. That's great. I'm less convinced that the co-CEO of one of the largest private equity firms in the world spends his time washing dishes and going grocery shopping. But who knows? Maybe. But, I, I, I mean, you do notice that, like, whenever a wealthy person runs for office, they are, always want to show you what a regular guy they are. But that's okay. But when your supporters hold a rally, where they pledge allegiance to a flag that was flown at the insurrection at the Capitol on January 6th, hey, the, the, the biggest threat to our democracy in my lifetime, when you don't separate yourselves from them, when you, when you don't think that's a problem, well, you know what? That's a problem. You, you, you can't run ads telling me you're a regular old hoops playing, dish washing, fleece wearing guy, but quietly cultivate support from those who seek to tear down our democracy. Either he actually believes in the same conspiracy theories that resulted in a mob, or he doesn't believe it, but he's willing to go along with it to say or do anything to get elected. And maybe that's worse. Because, because, because that says something about character. And character will end up showing when you actually are in office. What are you willing to stand up for? When are you willing to say no to your own supporters? When are you willing to say there's some things that are more important than getting elected and maybe American democracy is one of those things?